Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm on my way to a meeting, but I've had a couple of subscribers email me, and this is a topic that I've visited already with you guys. This is a topic I've already discussed. But it's okay. I'm very patient. I'm stern. I'm very humble, and I'm glad to go through it again. I've had uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, they claim to be Christians. And I'm going to say that because uh, they took offense, and I do not care what anybody thinks, but I put up, I put up several videos of exposing Islam and other false faiths. So, they took up they uh, sent, they took offense to that, and they said to me, well, Islam is a religion of peace. I have Muslim friends, and they are peaceful. That's their basis of telling me that Islam is peaceful. So I emailed them back, and I said, okay, well, have you ever read their Quran? Or their Hadith, which are Islamic books. And I'm not converting to, uh, to uh, become an I a Muslim, okay? Jesus Christ is Lord, and there's no question about that. Jesus Christ is God. So I would ask him these questions, and one of you might say, have you ever read the Hadith? Have you ever read the Quran? And have you ever read the Bible in whole content as a whole? So these brothers and sisters in Christ would come back at me and say, well, I never read the entire Bible which disproves Islam, by the way, brothers and sisters. And they said, and I never read the Quran or the Hadith. So, you see, I heard a lot of things about Muslims, about how they say kill the infidels and kill the Jews. And there's another part in the Quran that says, for Muslims to use the Torah and the people of the book, the gospel, which are Muslims, which are, I'm sorry, not Muslims, which are Christians and Jewish people, to use their books, the Torah and the Bible, to judge, okay? Use the gospel to judge. But then there's other parts of the Quran that says to kill the Jews and to kill the Christians. And don't befriend them. Don't yield to them. Don't show them any mercy. Don't um, befriend them. And the Quran also teaches that if a Muslim, that a Muslim can feel compelled to lie to a non-believer, okay? Um, if it means entrapping the enemy, in other words, planning their demise. I saw this for myself in the Quran. I read the Quran and I seen it in there for myself. It's undeniable proof that Islam is false. So the Quran teaches these things. It teaches other things about women. How about a woman's testimonies is worth that half of a man. Um, if a woman is charged with fornication for reliable male sources has to be selected to testify to, to testify um, in order to exonerate the woman to you know pardon her for the sin or to charge her with the sin now the woman is not given a chance to testify in her defense at all but if you go to the Bible right look at the book of Deuteronomy it's all over the scriptures if a woman is charged with a sin, ladies and gentlemen, she has a chance to testify. So in other words, let's say she's married and she's accused of fornication. She can testify and the judge who is listening in on the case, okay, will listen to her testimony and also the husband. And then listen to credible witnesses' testimony. And then using God's law and the Holy Spirit to decide if the woman is guilty or not. If she is not guilty, uh, you know, she's not charged with the sin, it's the, fall, the, the, the burden of the sin would fall on the husband, and then he would have to go through correction in order for that sin to be repented for. If she is proven guilty, she um, has to go through correction, take the consequence for that sin, and then the priest, this is in the Old Testament, has to make an offering in order for her sin to be forgiven. She also has to go through the correction, obviously. So, the woman's given a chance to testify in the word of God, in her defense. 
The woman is not treated wrongly. She can go out in public. She doesn't need a male companion in order to go out in public. She's treated as an equal. Yes, woman and man under the marriage, sacred covenant of marriage that is recognized and ordained by God, one man, one woman, one flesh. She has to be submissive to her husband. In the book of Psalms and Song of Solomon's little scriptures, it says that the wife or the husband has to treat his wife because she is like the crown. She is like a crown. Um, on his head, so to speak, I'm paraphrasing. So he has to treat her with love. He has to love her like himself. He has to honor her. And the wife has to do the same to him. And, um, you know, they have to treat each other with equality. So the Bible promotes that. The Bible treats women with equality. Okay? The Quran doesn't do that. The Quran you teaches that a woman cannot show her face. A woman cannot leave her house without a male companion. This is what I've learned after actually reading the Quran. There's other things that I learned. I'm barely even touching the surface. This proof of autopedophilia and uh, this proof of pedophilia in the Quran. Uh, the Quran mentions that when a man marries a woman and she is a virgin, okay, if he divorces her, she still has to be a virgin. Muslims don't practice that. They marry multiple women. Okay, and they diversionize them, and sometimes they even divorce them. They marry them just to have sex, and they divorce them, accusing them, okay, of any kind of charge. And you know that the man's testimony is taken over a woman's any day of the week, so the woman has no chance to even defend herself. Because how many times you notice that when a woman is living in, a, in an Islamic society, that she's oh, when, when she is going before the court of law because she's charged with something, the man always wins. Very slim chance that the woman wins, okay? So, it also teaches that uh, if a woman has not had her period yet, something about you have to wait like three months till she has her period. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means, it's, it's saying that when you marry, I'm going to step back a minute. When you marry a woman and she hasn't had her period yet, you have to wait for her to have her period in order to have sex with her. That's for the man. That's talking about a prepubescent girl, a girl under the age of 12, 13, 14 years old. When you confront a Muslim about this, their excuse to you is this. Well, that was the, the, the normal uh, trend back in the days of Muhammad, the false prophet rapist. That was the trend back then. They're telling you that that was a normal for a, a man to marry a child. It still doesn't make it right. That's their excuse. For justifying Muhammad being a pedophile. That's their excuse. Okay? It doesn't make it right. Child rape is child rape. And I pointed that out to these Christians. I told them why it's not a peaceful religion. Because it does advocate killing Christians and Jews and do not befriend them. And you have these Christians, these so-called Christians defending these Muslims. The very same Christians that the Muslim curate is telling the very same Christians that these Muslims are, that these, these Christians are defending these Muslims is what the Quran warns against. It says to kill the Christians and Jews. The Quran has so much hostility towards the Christians and Jews. You know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because they're a threat. Because the Christians have the truth that Jesus Christ is God. And here's another thing that I found out, because I'm also studying the Hadith. It's a, it's a, a compilation of testimonies of... Uh, Various individuals that claim to live in the times of uh, Muhammad. There's inconsistencies there. It does support pedophilia as well. Um, oh, the Quran teaches, and it's also in the Hadith as well, that Muhammad believes that women are deficient, they're not intelligent, and um, that most women, the hell is composed of mostly women because they were not grateful to their husbands. You see how he thinks of women? And here's another thing that disproves Islam, okay? In the Quran, it says to use the gospel and the people of the book. The people of the book means the Jews and the Christians. To use the gospel to judge if the Quran is right or not. Now, if you use the gospel and the gospel meaning the Bible and the Torah to judge if the Quran is righteous or not, then the Quran is false because the Bible disproves the Quran. Because in the Bible, Muhammad's not even in there. 
These Muslims are going to try to tell you, oh, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he cried out, Allah. No, he cried out, Abba. The NIV and all the perverted versions of the Bible, other than the KJV, the KJV and the NKJV are the only true versions of the Bible. The only true word of God. Anything outside of that tells you that Jesus Christ cried out, Allah. The other perverted Bibles. Now, now don't, give me, don't make, make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen. These demons out here that are perverting the word of God will take the word of God, right? They'll pervert it, and they will try to counterfeit the KJV version. They'll put the label of the KJV and everything. That's why you need to have discernment to determine if that is the word of God. You have to have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you as well. Now, so if you, you go back to what I said, if you use the gospel, right, and the Torah to confirm if the Quran is true or not, then you can, the result is that the Quran is false because the Torah and the Quran disprove the Bible, disprove the, I'm sorry, the Quran. Nowhere does it say in the Quran or the Torah that there was going to be a Muhammad coming along. The Bible warns of Muhammad, all right. It says a false, Christ, a false Christ and a false prophet will arise. Be very careful because they will perform lying signs and wonders, even if possible, to, de to deceive the very elect. And it also says in the Bible that there will be infidels, and I'm paraphrasing here, that will do horrible things. That they will, they, what they will do, they will do things, evil deeds, that they think that they're doing a service to God. Muslims these days, okay, in the Middle East, are killing Christians by the thousands, tens of thousands. And they're thinking that they're doing a service to God when they're actually doing a service to the devil. I'm going to point that out. Also, if you use the, the gospel and the Torah to prove the Quran, again, it's not going to prove, it actually disproves the Quran. Because in the Quran, it says, um, you got Muhammad saying that he's a prophet, claiming he's Allah. I mean, that he's the messenger of Allah. Okay? Um, you got, no, you got Allah claiming that Muhammad's the messenger. You don't hear Muhammad saying it himself, for one. Secondly, you know, Muhammad is a false prophet anyway, okay? If you read in between the lines, he implies he's got a prideful, lustful, perverted spirit. He implies he's a prophet of God, but he's not. He's a prophet of the devil, straight up. Also, you will notice that Muhammad is going to tell you, this is his testimony. He has no proof at all to back it up. His testimony is this, that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross, that Allah raised him to himself, and that Jesus Christ, the person that was on the cross was actually Judas Iscariot, that, that Allah deceived many and made them think that it was Jesus Christ. Some weird, some weird twisted, sick testimony Muhammad comes up with that is a total lie. Total lie. Jesus Christ did die on the cross. You know why? Because there's test, there's not only is there physical uh, scientific evidence, you can look it up yourself. They found the nails that nailed Jesus Christ to the cross, a piece of the cross, the lion he was buried in, his tomb. Okay, they found that. They found also Noah's Ark that supports the book of Exodus in the Bible. They found Solomon's temple. They found proof of fallen of a Nephilim. They found uh, proof of, uh, they found horse bones and chariot bones that proves again the book of Exodus. Found Solomon's temple, Solomon's palace, Solomon's tomb. There's so much scientific evidence. And I'm not relying on science, but these are based on archaeological findings that supports the Bible and the death of Jesus Christ. But you don't have not one scientific evidence or archaeological proof that Muhammad was a prophet. You only have proof that Jesus Christ walked the earth and that he was indeed the prophet, but he is God. The Bible says that, that, that Muhammad is a false prophet. The Bible says that the, Jesus Christ performed miracles. Many, many miracles. Muhammad didn't perform nothing. He was a sinner. The, Bible, the Quran calls Allah the greatest of deceivers, deceivers. The Bible labels the greatest of deceivers the father of lies, which is Satan, a.k.a. Allah. Satan is Allah. Allah is Satan. Satan is the author of the Quran, not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. Um... So here's a contradictory here. You have the you have the Muslims or the, the, the Quran telling you to judge if to to use the gospel and the Torah 
to judge if the Quran is true, right? And the gospel, the gospel, you know what's in the gospel? Jesus Christ's crucifixion. Jesus Christ's crucifixion is in the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. The gospel of the book of the Bible talks about, it's all centered on the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. So if Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross for our sins, why is the Quran saying to use the gospel and the Bible and the Torah to judge if the Quran is true? That makes no sense. That proves that the Quran is telling you people, okay, the Quran is telling you people this, that if you're going to use the gospel and the Torah and the Bible to prove the Quran is true, that means that Jesus Christ actually did die on the cross because the gospel is part of I mean, the gospel is centered on Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That is the gospel. You see the discrepancy here, ladies and gentlemen? I explained that to my brothers and sisters in Christ when I sent them back an email. I said, read the Quran, read the Hadith, and you will gain all this knowledge. Have the Holy Spirit lead. That religion is false. And also, uh, the problem with Muhammad's credibility as being a true prophet is that he has no prophecies. He never predicted anything, and his prophecies are false. Also, there's not one... Because he, he, the Quran claims that, that, that the Bible predicted Muhammad's coming, but he's not in the Bible, and he's not in the Torah. He's not mentioned anywhere. The only way that he's mentioned is that he's a false prophet. That's it. He's a false prophet, and he's a pedophile. That's the only thing he's mentioned. False Christ. A lover of the flesh. Lust. Idolatrous. That's what God mentions about Muhammad. Okay? There's no proof of this pervert ever being credited as a true prophet of God. And you know what Muslims say? Because what, what happens is when they say, okay, well, if Muhammad's in the Bible, then how did Paul's gospel come? How did Paul come about? They try to tell you that Paul corrupted the gospel. No. Paul's teachings are the same as the other prophets, the righteous prophets of old. Paul prophesied future events that are now, that have come to pass and are now coming to pass. Paul was a prophet of God. Muhammad is not. There's proof of Paul's existence. You know why? Because, the, because Peter knew Paul and other disciples, the other disciples knew Paul too. Remember Paul, was a, Paul, Paul used to persecute Christians and then he repented to God. And then Paul preached the gospel in front of many and performed miracles in front of many. So there was many witnesses that saw Paul's miracles. There were 500 brethren that saw Jesus Christ. Many saw Jesus Christ's crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. We all know Jesus, we all know Jesus Christ is God. He's eternal. 500 brethren saw Jesus Christ when he, after his resurrection, when he came back on earth to appear to his disciples one more time. They, 500 brethren, saw Jesus Christ in addition to the 12 disciples. They didn't see no prophet Muhammad. I'm here. I, I, again, ladies and gentlemen, I explain exactly the same thing I'm telling you to these Christians. There's so much more I could tell you, but I can't cover it in this video. I'm just here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that before you ever think of forsaking the name of Jesus Christ, do your research. Read the Quran. Read the Hadith. There's a guy named David Woods that does an excellent job of exposing Islam for what it is. And you know what? I went to God and I asked God about him. I said, is he telling the truth about what Islam is? And God told me yes, which is Jesus Christ. And then I said, I'm going to take this a step further. I'm going to read the Quran myself. And I'm going to read the Hadith and I'm still studying it, right? And um, everything David Wood said is correct. I saw it with my own two eyes in the Quran. I saw it in the Hadith. Everything he said is correct. Watch his videos, because he does an excellent job show, uh, exposing Islam for what it is. He owns Hadiths. He owns different versions of the Quran. He owns, he's a Christian, okay? I'm not promoting him as a prophet, but I'm just telling you, he does a phenomenal job exposing these wolves and sheep's clothing. Watch his videos. If you don't have time to look at a Hadith, or Quran, watch his videos, okay? And if you have any questions, please ask God. Ask God. Don't put your life in danger, you know, your, your spiritual salvation for these Muslims. I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. It's just I don't like the sin. 
When I say I hate a Muslim, I don't actually hate the person. I hate the sin. I love everybody, even Muslims. I just don't like the sin. Okay? You have a choice. You can either follow the path of righteousness, which is Jesus Christ, or you can follow the path of the devil, which is Islam, and other, other false faiths. All right, with that being said, I'm going to get ready to go. Please consult Jesus Christ if what I tell you is true.